Welcome back everyone to my guide on partial differential equations. In today's video we're going to be looking at solving problems with more general non-homogeneous boundary conditions. This is going to be a relatively short video because you'll see that when we're solving these types of problems, instead of getting rid of the non-homogeneous boundary conditions and obtaining a nice PDE like last time, we generally end up transferring the non-homogeneity in the boundary conditions to the PDE itself. And that's a longer issue we'll worry about later on. Anyway, let's begin. Remember last time when we solved a PDE problem with non-homogeneous boundary conditions? The issue with last time was that the problem I solved had u set to constant values at the edges, when in general the boundary conditions on u are typically time dependent and also contain derivatives. So what do we do when we have time dependent derivative containing boundary conditions? What we would do for these general boundary conditions is very similar to what we would do for time independent Dirichlet boundary conditions. Let me give you some intuition. Say I draw a plot of our dependent variable u as a function of x. Now this case is a bit more complicated because when we decompose the full solution u to a sum of a quote unquote steady state solution and a quote unquote transient solution, our steady state solution isn't really a steady state solution anymore because the boundary conditions are time dependent. Since these u0 and ul are constantly changing, our boundaries don't remain steady, and it follows that the part in the middle shouldn't remain steady either. However, we can still decompose the solution u into a sum of two components, so that the first component satisfies the inhomogeneous boundary conditions, and the second component obeys the homogeneous version of these boundary conditions. What we're going to do now is going to be very similar to what we did last time. Assume a form for the inhomogeneous solution uih, and then find the PDE problem that needs to be solved to determine u sub h. And the most general form we can come up with for uih is an equation that's quadratic in x, and the terms quadratic in x multiply the time-dependent boundary conditions u0 and ul. Now you might wonder why it's quadratic given that we use straight lines for the steady state solution in the last video, and that's because of cases in which we have derivatives specified at the boundaries instead of the function values themselves. That is if we have Neumann boundary conditions instead of the Dirichlet boundary conditions we had last time. Why? Because with Neumann boundary conditions if our derivatives were different at the boundaries, then it's simply not possible to have a straight line connecting those two points, since a straight line has only one derivative or one slope. That's why we need a higher order term to account for those situations, and hence the quadratic term. So let's take this u sub ih and apply those general boundary conditions to it. Let's start out at x equals zero, in which case this is what we have. Then let's go to x equals l, and here's what we get at that boundary. Now this leaves us with two equations and six unknowns, which is kind of impossible to solve without making some assumptions. However, the boundary conditions you would typically encounter in a PDE problem are simpler, and it's possible to use your intuition to assume and solve for particular values for the constants a, b, and c, depending on your boundary conditions. For instance, if I had pure Dirichlet boundaries, then my inhomogeneous solution component would look something like this. So very similar to what we had last time, except now the u0 and ul are time dependent instead of time independent. But if I had pure Neumann boundaries, there would be the quadratic term that I mentioned earlier. And for other types of boundary conditions, there are other solutions that you can find for the inhomogeneous component u sub ih. Anyway, that should cover the inhomogeneous component. Because this inhomogeneous component is such that it fully satisfies these inhomogeneous boundary conditions, the second component remaining, which we labeled the homogeneous component, must fully satisfy the corresponding homogeneous boundary conditions. But I'm going to show you that the PDE the homogeneous component satisfies isn't necessarily the same as the original PDE that we had. So let's start by going back to that original PDE. If we plug u into this PDE, then we can take the derivatives of u and separate those derivatives, since differentiation is a linear operation, so the derivative of the sum of two functions is the sum of their derivatives. Given the general form for u sub ih we used earlier, we can find its derivatives in both position and time, and plug those into the split up PDE, 
The first derivative of u sub i h in time is pretty easy. Just differentiate the u0 and ul terms since those are the only time dependent ones. The second derivative of u sub i h in x is also easy. Just differentiate the terms in x. If we rearrange this equation, then we'll get a PDE that isn't particularly pretty. Instead of fully taking out the non-homogeneous part, we've actually transferred it into the PDE itself. This wasn't a problem when we had constant Dirichlet boundary conditions last time, because in that case, these time derivatives would cancel, and the C1 and C2 were both zero. But with more complex and general boundary conditions, we've lost that luxury. The problem we're dealing with now is of solving a non-homogeneous PDE that has homogeneous boundary conditions. The only thing now that's left to worry about is this initial condition. If this is the initial condition on u, then what's the initial condition on u sub h? Again, we'll plug in u and substitute t equals 0 into its expression. At t equals 0, u sub i h is just a1 plus b1x plus c1x squared times u sub 0 at 0 plus a2 plus b2x plus c2x squared times u sub l at 0. So plugging this into the initial condition and isolating for u sub h gives this as the initial condition on u sub h. So let me take this PDE, these boundary conditions, and this initial condition and put them all together for the purposes of concluding what we learned in this video. So in the end, this is the PDE problem we have to solve to determine the homogeneous component of the general solution. The issue now is, how do we find solutions to a non-homogeneous PDE? And that's something we're going to be doing in the next video.